Okay, so we are on slide six. I want to, I didn't finish the last clip, so I want to do that so I don't forget. Um, so we had said that the important part of the atom, hey, that we are focusing on are the protons and the electrons. The positive component that we find here in the nucleus, the protons, and then the negative that's kind of buzzing around the outside. Next year, we're gonna get into this in great detail, like what's involved, um, not what they are, but how they react, what responds, what they are responsible for, that kind of thing. All elements, so all those elements on that periodic table over there are naturally neutral, meaning that however many protons you have, that's the exact number of total electrons that you have also. And so that's really important because neutral means no charge. Right? And so when you think about that, if this has six protons, it has six total electrons, and that means that it's not charged. We said for there to be an electric field or to have the appropriate property to respond to an electric field, something has to be charged. So people have a really hard time with this definition for whatever reason. All we mean by charged is an unequal number of protons and electrons. They could be off by just one. So you could have five protons and only four electrons. That would be considered charged. You could also have like 20 protons and 10 electrons. That'd be even more charged because they're farther away in how like their numbers being equal. All right, so the greater the unequal number, the greater the charge. Uh, if you get like a mass of charged atoms and combine them, they could potentially be explosive. Um, or make an unstable element. Okay, so it's not that it would become necessarily unstable, it would be more reactive. So not, maybe not explosive, but we're gonna look at something in a minute. It's kind of like a little mini explosion, and that's static electricity. Um, when charges come together that are opposite, you'll get that, that spark. So it seems kind of like a little mini explosion if you wanna think of it that way. So kind of on the right line of thinking. So yesterday, did anybody think of our fart funk throughout the day? Yes. Nope. Yeah. I forgot yeah. as soon as I left this I room. Yes. I forgot I was Okay. okay. <laughs> so here's the thing. There is also, um, it, it works with any kind of smell in general. I just say fart funk because it's easy to remember. Um, but here's another example. So um, it was years ago my son was playing travel baseball and we were getting ready to go to Nashville for a baseball tournament and like I was hurrying up packing up last minute things putting them in the car and all of a sudden I'm like uh oh we have two little Jack Russells I was like oh no oh my gosh I think I smell skunk and they're killers like they kill everything and I was like I smell it and I'm like looking at the dogs and I'm like they don't really smell that bad so I'm like maybe they didn't get sprayed but I'm like it is so strong it's so like I'm walking around the side of the house no back of the house no the other side a little bit and I kind of go towards the front and I'm like getting closer and closer I'm like oh my gosh I'm like I'm getting close so like I back up because I don't want to stink and I'm like where is it so I'm like looking around like I don't see anything I'm like well maybe it just sprayed and left and I go back in the house and I'm in the like our hallway like by our kitchen which is by the front door and I'm like okay I can smell it in here I open the front door and I was like oh and I shut it and I run back outside look they had killed a skunk drug it under the front porch and I could see the black and white under there and it was dead and I was just like oh so like I kept getting closer and I'm like backing off because I'm like oh I don't want to get too close and start stinking you know me start stinking and so when I came from the house, obviously it was kind of blocked a little because of that door being shut. And as soon as I opened it, it was like, Ooh. it was awful. And so that's another thing. Like if you, uh, even if, usually we think of like bad smells because you're like, oh, nasty. But it can happen with any smell. Like you don't know it's there usually, right? Until you like walk into it. And so that's what we're talking about with this force field. It's invisible. The closer you get, the stronger it is. So with all of these force fields, that's going to be kind of the, the key characteristics. So if you think of the fart funk or walking into a bad smell, or if you want to think about walking into a good smell, you can do that. It's not as dramatic, but um, same concept. The closer you get to the source, 
the more intense it's going to be. And that's true of our force fields. And so that's true with our electrical fields as well. Um, okay, this is not new information. We know that opposite charges are going to attract. We also know that like charges, meaning a plus and a plus, will push away. We know that a negative and a negative will push away. So if they're like charges, they push away. If they are um, opposite, they come together. All right, and so those are two of your vocab terms, attract and repel. And so um, this happens with clothes in a dryer. Anybody ever go to grab a t-shirt or a sweatshirt out of the dryer and they have like a sock stuck to it or something like that? Yeah, it happens a lot and then you peel them away, like they're like, they seem like they're glued together. Well, what happens is in this dryer, the clothes are tumbling. That's the point of the dryer, right? Is to tumble them and heat them and so that the clothes will dry. And so what happens is electrons, because they're on the outer part of the atom, and everything is made of atoms, those electrons can get peeled away from one item and stuck to another um, because the sock now maybe has become negatively charged and the t-shirt has become positively charged as those electrons leave the sock or leave the t-shirt and go to the sock and then you get this attraction. Okay. And so that's a real good example of um, clothes gaining and losing electrons. And if you have two different pieces of clothing, one's gaining it, one's losing electrons, well now you have a charge built up on each, a positive on this and a negative on this, opposites attract and they come together. Okay. Um, and so that causes them to stick until you physically remove them. And obviously putting like dryer sheets in, that keeps that process from happening. It keeps everything neutral where charges aren't able to build up on things. Okay. So static electricity, this is kind of our most visual way of looking at electrical fields and charges, all right? So it's the gathering of excess charge on an object. That's all static electricity is. And this time of year, static electricity starts becoming a real thing as we are putting sweatshirts, Audrey's put her sweatshirt on. She's probably gonna take it off at some point, probably put it back on at some point. What happens to your hair a lot of times? Right? It starts getting real fuzzy and um, staticky, right? And the reason is, is because you're building up an electric charge. You're taking it on and off and that rubbing back and forth as it goes over your head and back on, over your head and back on, builds that uneven number of protons and electrons. And so materials are made of atoms that are normally electrically neutral, meaning there's no charge, meaning they have equal protons and equal electrons. But we can do something very simple to change that because to get a charge, you have to have that separation or a way to cause an uneven number of protons and electrons. So it's nice, like, we're not all walking around charged, like where, you know, all the atoms in our body are unequal and we're like shocking ourselves when we touch everything, which is kind of nice. But we can make this happen pretty easily um, by rubbing two objects together. And so electrons may move from one material to the other, which leaves an excess of positive charge on one material and an equally negative charge on the other. So if you take electrons from one item, you're gonna make that, um, if you take it, the electrons, then the item that you took them from becomes positive because it has less e negatives. The item that gained the electrons are now gonna become negatively charged because they now have more negatives. Positive now, negative now, now you get an attraction. Okay. So, think about the fart fuck. Which one of these do you think is showing a greater electrical charge or a stronger static force? What do you think, Sarah? Very good. You're walking into the fart funk. The closer you get to the source, the more intense it becomes. These balloons are closer, so they are actually experiencing a greater electrical um, static charge. Um, I, it's not meant to be deceiving. Someone said, well, because this one has three. Um, even if you just had one, just because it's closer, that makes it more intense. He does not look happy about that. I'm going to say maybe like his grandkids got a hold of them. 
Got it. Do you have grandchildren who would like to watch? Maybe, maybe she likes, she's ornery, has shenanigans, she plays. Okay, so static electricity. So you have a thundercloud. Within this thundercloud, there are tiny bits of ice, and this is frozen, I don't know if that's a word you have to write, frozen raindrops. And so they're, it's kind of like a dryer, like they're bumping and rumbling and tumbling and, and turbulent and moving all around, all right? So you have these little bits of ice that are bouncing into each other. And this collision, because they're rubbing past each other, creates an electrical charge. And so you get these positive charges um, or protons that form at the top of the thundercloud. And then you get these negative charges that kind of accumulate towards the bottom of the cloud. All right, you can kind of see this. Um, let me go back real quick. If you look at this little cloud up here, the little picture up here, right? So now you see the charges have separated. And then you also see charges building up on the ground. And let me back it up one more time. There we go. So charges separate. Now you get a negative that has attracted the positives from the ground. When that force becomes strong enough between the negative and the positive, it's going to do something called discharge, which is dis means kind of the opposite of charge. So you get rid of the charge. Like it basically comes together and all of the electrons and protons kind of mix back up and there's no buildup of a charge anymore. It like evens things back out temporarily. Okay. And so, <clears throat> since opposites attract and a charge has been built up, they're going to reach a critical point where eventually they will discharge or kind of eliminate that unequal um, positive and negative component and become neutral again. And so, the charge that comes from these points eventually connects and the charge reaching down, so they kind of reach and join each other, and we get this lightning strike. This can happen between the ground and a cloud. This can also happen between cloud and cloud. So you know, a lot of times, like in the summertime, um, where we get that lightning that's kind of like just from cloud to cloud or going across the sky, you don't see it coming down. Um, a lot of times that's more like in like heat lightning, you get that, that build up. Um, than a actual like storm cloud where it's actually like in the middle of an actual storm. But it's the same process whether it's cloud to cloud or whether it's cloud to ground. Okay. All right. And so um, if you've ever, if you remember being on a slide, um, I don't know, maybe it's been a little while since you've been on a slide. Um, remember ever coming off the slide and being real staticky? Yeah, I remember it. It's been a long time since I've been on a slide. Like my hair would do that. It's like, right? It goes everywhere. Um, so as you slide down the slide, your hair becomes staticky by the time you get to the bottom. Well, what's happening? What, static electricity? So what's happening to the electrons um, on you? What do you think? What's happening to your electrons? What could be happening? Sarah, what do you think? Okay, so like they're leaving you and they go to the slide. So now if you've lost electrons, you're more positively charged. If the slide has gained electrons, yours, it's now positively charged. So guess what? Would it be negatively charged to gain more electrons and we lost electrons? We be negative. Did I say it bad? Yes. Backwards? Okay, sorry. We are positively charged. The slide becomes negatively charged. Thank you. In my head, I said it right. It doesn't work in my head. Thank you. Um, so we have that opposite charge. And it could be the other way. Like you could be taking electrons from the slide, right? And so it's not like we say one way or another. Certain materials hold their electrons more tightly than others. Um, some give their electrons more easily, and so that kind of determines like what takes and what gives. Um, and I'm not ever going to have you be like, okay, which one's taking, which one's giving. Um, but just realize we're talking about one is gaining the electrons and becomes negative, 
one loses the electrons and becomes positive. Okay. Um, and so the other component of this is if you are losing, like, like you're, let's say, building up a positive charge on your hair, right? If your hair is all positives, so not only is your hair going to the oppositely charged slide, but if your hair is all positives, what do true positives do? What are they going to do? They're going to repel. So not only is your hair attracting to the slide, it's actively repelling from itself. Okay? So two things are kind of at work. Okay? <clears throat> So not only is the opposite, I'll get clear because we have a flashcard by your chair. Not only are you um, talking about the opposites at work between the person and the slide, but you're talking about um, likes at work repelling each other because the hairs all have the same like charge now. And so they're going to react like all things with a light charge do, and they will try to repel each other. And we get each hair standing straight up, pushing away from itself, but being attracted to the slide. Have you guys ever... Um, you might not have heard it called a Van de Graaff generator, but like if you've gone to COSI or been able to touch like the static ball and you touch it and, and we have one and we'll actually get it out here um, soon. Um, it, it generates a charge and we'll describe that and like you touch it and then the charge goes through and then all of a sudden your hair and like you can zap people, all kinds of fun. So this thing is pretty cool. Um, this is a website, actually you're gonna do a lab tomorrow, an online balloon lab um, that is dealing with static electricity. Um, but this is John Travolta, instead of John Travolta, John Travoltage, like electricity of voltage, what, huh, right? Yeah, so this is John Travoltage. So here is a rug and here is his foot. We are going to create a electrical charge by gaining electrons. He's rubbing off his protons on to the rub, so he now has more electrons, and when that happens, he becomes statically charged, right? And so to get rid of that buildup, he is going to try to discharge and become neutral again. So now he is neutral. If I Make him pick his nose. Um, and I pick up his foot, right? Notice how the quicker I rub it back and forth, the more of a charge. Now notice, his hand is having trouble. He can't discharge there because he's too far away. He's not within that region where he can experience the discharge. So it's kind of like the idea of the fart bunk. If you're too far away, you don't smell it. It's still there but you're just not close enough to smell it. So if we get him close enough, and it doesn't even have to be that close, but it can't be as far away as he was when he was picking his nose. Yes? Do you have a rug so we can try this? So here's the thing, it, I don't. But at home, like if you have like socks on and you walk across your carpet and you're like running around, that's probably when you're gonna build up that charge, right? And then you go and touch somebody who wasn't doing that and you can shock them. I mean, that's all static electricity is. And honestly, lightning is a giant form of static electricity, right? So it's not something that, um, you know, we, we really think of, but that's all static is. It's a miniature kind of lightning strike. If it's ever dark and you um, have shocked somebody, do you see that spark? Have you ever seen it? Yeah, it's kind of like, oh, like you feel it, but then sometimes if it's big enough and it's dark enough, you can actually see that spark. And so that, I mean, that's basically what lightning is on a massive level. It's a static shock. Okay. So this is also in Google Classroom just because it's kind of fun to play with. 
Um, and you can see, you know, the more you rub it back and forth, and that's the key, that's the easiest way to build up a charge is to um, just rub things back and forth. So if we just move it a little bit, and then notice if I just have a little bit of a charge, look how much smaller the, the charge is, the discharge is. So it's pretty much equal, kind of like what you were saying, does it combine, does it, does it add up, like if you get more and more charge? Yes, okay. So I just like to, I think that's kind of a fun one. Be like, hey, we're just doing science here. Okay, so we have two videos that we're gonna watch. Um, if you want to put your notes away, you can do that. We're gonna end with this today.